the last method of apportionment in our book uh, is called the Huntington Hill method of apportionment uh, and is actually the current method that we use in the United States to determine um, the House of Representatives. Uh, but in 1941, uh, the Congress passed the Apportionment Act um, signed by uh, President Roosevelt, um, which basically mandated the following things happen. Number one, the necessary seats in the House of Representatives is, is fixed at 435. So just... Uh, just to pause here for a sec, there was a lot of quibbling about how many seats should we have, and there was a lot of change over the years for a lot of reasons. And the change in the number of seats is one of the things that caused these issues, because like with the Alabama paradox, when the seats change, sometimes something unfair happened and someone complained. Or, you know, there's a lot of complaints had that happened. So basically, they knew that there was a need to just fix it forever. That way, nobody's going to complain about it um, later. And number two is that the method to be used is called the equal proportions method or the Huntington Hill method as, as our book refers to it due to um, the statisticians and people that kind of invented or, you know, proved its uh, value, um, which is very, very similar to Webster's method in most ways. And we're going to get into how this works. Um, and basically it ended all the quibbling and changes to the systems that had, you know, been historical problem of apportionment. Uh, and kind of put a nail in the coffin, kind of ended that issue. So what is the Huntington Hill method? How does it work? So it's it's pretty much the same as all the other methods of suitable divisor methods. The only difference is it uses a new type of rounding, which is referred to as geometric mean rounding, or hunt, our book calls it the Huntington Hill rounding. Um, but basically, let's just take a peek of what our book, you know, the, a little excerpt from our book. It says, step one, find a suitable divisor, uh, and blah, blah, blah. Step two, find the apportionment of each state by rounding its quota using the Huntington Hill rounding rule. Again, I find that these are not very helpful because I have to find a suitable advisor. That's the hard part of the question. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately, what type of rounding am I doing? I'm using this other type of rounding. And basically, this is coming from a different type of rounding where let's say we're looking at the number 3.47 uh, under traditional conventional rounding, we, that would be rounded down because anything underneath 0.5 is always rounded down. Anything 0.5 or greater is rounded up. That's just how people think of normal rounding. But that's often referred to as arithmetic mean rounding. You can't see the slides because my head is in the way. Uh, but basically, it's, it's resulting from a cutoff point where 0.5 is considered the cutoff point for all numbers. But that sort of rounding system is actually not the proven best statistical method of rounding for a lot of cases. Uh, and there's a lot of different types of roundings based on other mathematical scales. That's actually what we call a linear scale or arithmetic is a term that we refer to with sequences for sequences that have a common jump in each case. But a geometric mean cutoff point actually changes the cutoff point depending on the numbers and it's a scaled value which is calculated a little bit differently. Now it's a little bit more complicated but I wanted to show you how does this rounding work and then we'll apply geometric mean rounding to finding an apportionment method as we continue. So let's go ahead and switch back to the packet. I'm trying to find my mouse. There it is. I'll put me back there. Me and the slideshow. And let's return to the packet. Okay. So back in the packet, um, what is a, what does geometric mean? What does that mean? Actually, this is in the slides too, but on the packet, I've provided what is the formula for the geometric mean of two numbers. And basically, geometric mean is defined to be the square root of a product of two numbers. So I wanted to just talk about what do these terms mean, because, and I also want to talk what is an arithmetic mean, what's the difference, and what is the formula for an arithmetic mean. But an arithmetic mean is just another word for an average. So like, say, for example, you get a 72 and an 84 on your test, right? If you're thinking about, well, what's my average score? What, you know, everybody knows to do is to add them up and divide by two, right? Because that's how we average numbers. And that's technically right. That's the normal way that people find averages. But a lot of people don't know that that's just only one way of doing it. Technically, that's not the most sensible way of averaging things in a lot of cases. And with grades, that's almost always how professors will calculate the grade of a student. But that actually doesn't necessarily make sense. <laughs> Anyways, um, adding those things up, 72 plus 84, 
and then dividing by 2, that gives us an average value of 78. And we'd often say, well, that's our average. That's our mean value. Um, but basically, that's referred to as an arithmetic mean of the two numbers. So, well, what is a geometric mean? It's going to be a different value. It's a different type of average. And instead of basically, an arithmetic mean is always calculated by taking the two numbers, adding them up, and dividing by 2. Or if you had three numbers, you'd add them all up and divide by 3. A geometric mean is taken by instead taking the square root of the product of those two numbers. So let's say I wanted to know what's the geometric mean of my my two test scores. Instead, I would take the square root of 72 times 84, and that would give me a arithmetic mean of about 77.77. I uh, notice it is a little bit different, but it's it's typically not substantially different than a an arithmetic mean. And a geometric mean is is on an uh, an exponential scale instead of a linear scale, which is why it's a little bit different. And there's you know certain reasons why it would make sense to use this. And there again, there's other formulas you could use to average numbers, um, and it's really contextual to the type of equation and the type of mathematical function that you're trying to impose on a scenario. But anyways, that, that's that's the idea of an arithmetic mean. So, um, and that's exactly how Huntington Hill rounding works. So let's get back into uh, more specific examples. Um, and basically, the difference is for every number, there's going to be a different cutoff point to determine whether or not I should round it up or down. Like, let's say, for example, we're doing our apportionment and we come up with a modified quota of 3.48. Do we round that up or down? That's kind of the question we're trying to figure out here. How does Huntington Hill rounding work? Now, okay, if we're if we're doing traditional rounding, this would be rounded down. But under Huntington Hill, Huntington Hill, it's not necessarily the same. So the question is, how do I know? But basically, there's going to be a specific cutoff point, which is going to be different for every single number pair. And if this t little table over here gives you some sample cutoff points for smaller numbers, single digit numbers, but it says that if your quota is between three and four, the cutoff point will be 3.464. So basically, if we're trying to figure out whether or not to round uh, 3.48 up or down, we need to know what's the cutoff point. And the cutoff point here would be 3.46. Uh, and basically, how you choose whether to round it up or down is if it's above the cutoff point, round it up. If it's below the cutoff point, round down. So since 3.48, that is above the cutoff point. Let me just go ahead and note this. Above the cutoff, it's going to be rounded up, and that's how the rule works. So this this 3.48 will round up to 4, and this will be the final apportionment um, if we're using Huntington Hill rounding. And notice how that's different than conventional rounding for this specific case. Um, and if you want to think about traditional rounding a little bit differently, basically for every number, the cutoff point would be 3.5, 4.5, 5.5. .5. So no matter what it is, 0.5 is always the cutoff point because the arithmetic mean is always the same. And that's something, because it's a linear average, the, the cutoff point's always the same. And really, it's the easiest way of averaging, right? Because it's you think about it, it's exactly halfway between. That's what 0.5 is, half. Uh, and that's what makes sense. But half has a different connotation. And that's kind of what geometric mean is about, is it's a different type of half. And if you're wondering how do you calculate the cutoff point, it's always by taking the square root of the upper quota times the lower quota. So in that case, round it down, round it up, take the square root of those. That's how this number was obtained, the square root of 12. And you know, as another example, let's say we had a um, modified quota of 5.39. What we would do is we would go, well, what's the cutoff point? for 5 and 6 in between there. So we take the square root of the lower quota times the upper quota, which would give us approximately 5.477. Notice that this is below the cutoff, meaning it's going to get rounded down. And so really the cutoff point is just a way of, you know, what's the what's the level for which I round up or down? That's way below 5.47, so we would round that down, and that would be our outcome. And let's say you run into a modified quota that is not on this chart here, like 12.498, and we want to know. Well, basically, the you start by taking the um, geometric mean of 12 and 13. I think I might have called it arithmetic mean on accident, but arithmetic means normal. Geometric is this sort of square root system. 
But basically, I take the square root of the lower times the upper quota. We need to figure out what that is. Square root of 12 times 13, which would give me 12.489996. And that's not exact. That's my calculator's best approximation to that value. Um, but what I can tell is that 12.498 is above the cutoff point, right? Because that was 12.48, that's 12.49. So this is above the cutoff point. And again, if it's above, it's going to be rounded up. So that would be rounded up to 13, which would be my quota when rounding under Huntington Hill rounding systems. So one of the last things I wanted you to notice before we actually do an example is that Huntington Hill rounding is almost the same as conventional rounding. The only difference is the cutoff points are a little bit fluid. And as the numbers increase, it actually gets closer and closer and closer to the arithmetic mean. And actually, another thing is geometric mean of two numbers is always smaller than the arithmetic mean, well, when it comes to whole numbers, at least. Um, but basically, notice that all of these are 1.4, 2.4, 3.4. It's, it's always going to be very, very close, and the margins are very, very slim. But basically, it's slightly better than using the arithmetic mean mathematically. That's why we use it, even though it's a little bit more complicated and most people don't aren't too familiar with the system of rounding. And you can imagine why people don't really round this way is because it's way harder to understand than just 0.5, right? 0.5 is easy, uh, but this sort of system is a little bit contrived. Well, it, it's really not. It makes a lot of sense for most reasons, but it's, you know, non-math people don't, there's there's a lot of steps, right? And so it's not, the, the complexity sometimes outweighs the value, if, if you see what I'm saying. But let's go ahead and apply Huntington Hill rounding to, also wanted to mention, I never put Huntington Hill on the exam, but I do like to show you, because it's, it's what we actually use, and I want you to understand kind of what's the end goal, what's the penultimate method of apportionment, and not necessarily that this method is perfect either, mind you, because uh, each apportionment method has certain flaws to it, but it is far and away better than the others for the reasons we've discussed. But anyways, basically, when we're using the standard divisor of 40, if we were to round this by Huntington Hill, basically how I remember it is if it's bigger than 0.5, it's always going to be up. If it's beneath 0.4, it's always down. And if it's somewhere in between 0.4 and 0.5, then I have to check really carefully. But notice, in most cases, it's not going to be that fine of a level of detail. Um, like 6.025 will round down, 6.75 will round up, 3.65 will round up, 1.6 will round up, and 2 is already round. And mainly because if I check these cutoff points, well, each one of these is above each of those cutoff points. And basically, um, it has no difference from conventional rounding. The only difference is that when you, once you go through those steps of guessing divisors, um, it'll be a little bit different in, the outcome can be a little different and the actual numbers that you run into have a little bit more, um, there's a little bit more math in there. But basically, go ahead and try this one on your own. I'm not gonna run through it. I believe it comes out to 41 point three or something like that for a suitable divisor and use this as an example to practice Huntington Hill rounding. And that will end up, that will end our discussions on the methods of apportionment. Uh, and I know it's gotten quite tedious, um, but in the very last page of the notes and the last thing I'm gonna talk about are paradoxes. We've already encountered the Alabama paradox, uh, but there are a couple others uh, possible things that could happen. And I just kinda wanna discuss that and and on that note.